Hi, I'm Matt. I'm the head of analytics at Farmers Business Network, and we're going to talk today about how you can use data to maximize profitability on your farm. Just to start off with, before getting into data science on the farm, what is data science anyway? This is a buzzword we hear a lot about, and it's really not that complicated or foreign. Uh, it really just refers to the idea of taking large aggregated data sets from a lot of different sources, then combining those together and analyzing them with sophisticated statistical, sometimes machine learning techniques to help extract interesting patterns and insights from that data that will help us learn new things and help us use these patterns to make better decisions in the future. Specifically on the farm, there's a few reasons why looking at large data sets is really, really important and can be very impactful and, uh, and helpful for your profitability. We'll talk about each of them in more detail, but the three main reasons are First of all, by aggregating data together from a lot of different growing conditions from farmers all across the country, we can experiment faster. We can learn from what other farmers are doing and take advantage of all the natural variability in farmer management practices to very quickly realize how these different decisions affect yield and affect profitability. FBN farmers are not intentionally trying to conduct experiments for other members in the network, but it happens just naturally by chance anyway. Farmers grow different varieties, they use different farming practices, they experience different weather conditions, and by aggregating that data together across the network, we're able to identify how these different factors affect crop production, even if any one farmer didn't try all of them. The second reason is that by aggregating data together, you end up looking at very large data sets, and large data sets give us more confidence in the results, more confidence that we're making the right decision, than we could have if we were using a small data set. And the third reason is that by aggregating data together from a lot of different farms, we end up looking at data from diverse growing conditions. Data from diverse growing conditions is critical for better understanding how certain factors affect yield and better understanding how to optimize decisions in the future to maximize profitability. The first reason that big data is so valuable on your farm is how by aggregating data together from a lot of different farmers, which is what FBN does, we can run virtual experiments in the network much faster than an individual farmer could run experiments on their farm. Farmers have always been very experimental. A lot of modern statistics was developed to help farmers analyze agricultural experiments that they're running on their farm. But the reality is also that farming is very complicated. There's a huge number of factors that affect crop production from the soil conditions, weather conditions, genetics of the seed. There's an overwhelming number of combinations of these factors that would have to be um, experimented with. So for a farmer to try 12 different varieties across 20 different soil types, and say you also wanted to try them at different seeding rates, with 50 acres of data on each combination, we calculated that this would take 30 years for the average FPN farmer to try out all these combinations. That's completely infeasible, right? By the end of those 30 years, there'll be different varieties on the market, growing practices may have changed. One way around this problem where in a small data set from your farm, it's very slow to run these experiments is to take advantage of the experiments that other farmers in FBN are already doing. So even though an individual farmer only plants, you know, at most 10, 15 varieties in a given year, FBN has observed data on over 3,000 varieties, giving us a much greater coverage of the varieties that are on the market. Aggregated across all of the network and all of the historical data, FBN has aggregated more than 12,000 years of collective farming experience from our members. Let's walk through a concrete example of how aggregating data helps us learn more quickly what the best practices might be on a given farm. And specifically, we're going to focus on the decision of seed selection. As you all know, seed selection is a critical decision that farmers face every year. And it's a hard decision to get right, partially because there's so many varieties that are on the market and not often a lot of data about how they'll actually perform on your farm. So let's consider a few different ways in which a farmer could try to make this very critical but difficult decision about seed selection based on data. There's at least three different data sets that a farmer might consider. The first is looking at historical data from their farm. So basically looking at varieties that they planted in the past and seeing how they performed and picking the ones that performed well. Another way to look at this is to look at university trial data. So universities are often running experiments to see how these varieties perform um, on research plots. And the third data set we'll look at is the FBN data from other real world farmers, aggregating their precision yield data and their precision planting data to identify how different varieties performed in different conditions. What we looked at here is we calculated the percentage of varieties on the market that have data 
from each of these three data sources. So if you only look at data from your own farm, on average, that only covers at most 20% of the varieties that are on the market. You could also look at university trial data, and when you do this, you get much better variety coverage, but you're still missing out on a lot. There's still huge numbers of varieties that you would have no data on if you were to restrict yourself to that data set. In contrast, if you consider the FBN data, you see that of the varieties on the market, we've observed nearly 90% this gives us the confidence to know that if you're looking at the data in FBN, you have data on more varieties, so you have a greater confidence that you're picking the best one and that you're not missing out on a better one. So this is an example looking at a farmer in central Illinois who made seed selection decisions based on varieties that he had planted before. All the bars are different varieties that this farmer could have planted. This is data that was showing up in FBN at the end of 2015, and then we compared how these varieties actually performed in 2016. And what we see is that the farmer planted a lot of really good varieties that did really well, some almost 220 bushels an acre, but there's all these other varieties that are even better than the best variety that this farmer planted. The farmer planted, you know, about six different varieties that year. Some of them were really good, but there's a lot of varieties that this farmer was missing out on by only looking at his own data. This makes perfect sense. A farmer can't plant every variety on their farm. It's a reason why you have to look at the network data in order to be sure that you're getting the best seed for your farm. We looked at farmers who in 2016 planted the variety that at the end of 2015 showed up as the top variety in FBN for their soil and we compared their performance to farmers who planted a different variety. We observed on average a yield difference of more than six bushels an acre between farmers who planted that best variety and those who planted a different one. And on soil types where we have even more data, we observed even larger increases, sometimes more than 20 bushels an acre, more that farmers were achieving by planting varieties that were based on the network data, the best varieties rather than just planting varieties that had worked well for them in the past. The second reason why big data is very, very valuable in farming is that by aggregating large data sets together, we gain more confidence in the results than we could possibly have in a small data set. A uh, common concern that we hear about agricultural data and specifically large aggregated data sets is related to the calibration of monitors. Yield monitors, as we all know, are very common on farm equipment, but they can be difficult to calibrate, and some of the data that is collected from them may not be calibrated correctly. We often hear concerns about this as to how can you trust big data sets when there's all this miscalibrated data going into them. One of the ways that we address that at FBN is by encouraging our farmers to submit weight tickets from their sale of their grain. We looked at the distribution of yields that these fields had from the monitors, and then we looked at the distribution of yields these fields had after these calibrations were applied. And the remarkable pattern that we observe here is that in aggregate, the yield difference between these two data sets is almost negligible. It's less than one bushel an acre. The fact that we've aggregated a lot of data together lets us get around this issue of monitor calibration with a, with a very high degree of confidence. In a small data set, a individual miscalibration could have a really big impact. If a monitor is recording yields that are 10% higher on some fields and 10% lower on other fields, you might incorrectly think that one field did better when it was actually just a calibration problem. But in aggregate, across FBN, the calibration issue is not a big deal. Data on some fields may be miscalibrated too high, data on other fields may be miscalibrated too low, but in aggregate, those cancel themselves out. This doesn't mean that you can't calibrate your monitor or shouldn't post-calibrate your yields in FBN. It's still very important that you do that to make sure that your own analytics and your own benchmarking are accurate. It'll lead to better insights for your farm. But it does give us the confidence that in aggregate, even if not everybody is calibrating their monitors, the fact that these miscalibrations occur randomly means that the networked analytics and their integrity are preserved even if some of the data going into it has not been perfectly calibrated. To make the point more concrete, let's look at an example not from farming to better understand how big data sets give us more accurate data and more accurate information than small data sets do. So say we have a coin and we wanna know, is this coin fair? One way to answer that question is to toss the coin many times and to look at the percentage of times that the coin turns up heads. We know that if the coin is fair, it should be 50-50. So this animation here shows, as we toss a coin more and more times, the running percentage of the previous tosses that were heads. Early on, when we've only tossed the coin a few times, it looked like the percentage of heads was really, really low. However, as we play the animation forward, we see that we've zeroed in on the true answer, which as we all know is 50-50. In a small data set, you don't know that the data you've observed is a real pattern. 
The data could be due to random variation, and to make a decision on that could lead you very far astray. One of the questions we often hear about aggregating data sets together is that some of the data that goes in to a really big data set just by chance is not going to be good. There is bad data out there and it is a concern in a small data set. So we did an experiment where instead of looking at a fair coin, we looked at tossing a bunch of different coins, one of which was unfair. What we're looking at here is the population of coins that we tossed. One of the coins is double-headed, so we'll always turn up heads. And rather than tossing one coin, we toss each of these coins 25 times. What we're looking at here is the percentage of coins that turned up heads aggregated together across 25 tosses from each of these coins. And you can see that when we're only tossing the unfair coin, we get heads 100% of the time. Even here, you can see that as you add more and more good coins to the mix, the impact of that bad coin quickly becomes neutralized. And a very similar pattern is observed in a more agricultural example. So the same patterns for large data sets to cancel out the noise in a small data set happens in farm data as well. So what we looked at here was the average yield of decalb 6297, which is a popular corn variety, planted by a lot of farmers in the US. We looked at two different things. First of all, we looked at the individual farmer yields that we observed over time. And we also looked at the average yield in FBN over time as we collected more and more data on that variety. Early on, the FBN average was very susceptible to new data coming in. However, as we collected more and more data, the average yield quickly stabilized and has become incredibly constant over time. It hasn't changed at all since even as we've quadrupled the size of the data set. When you're on the left side of this graph at only a couple hundred or maybe a couple thousand acres of data, it's very difficult to know if that data is reliable. However, in a large data set, all this random variability has canceled itself out. The third reason that large data sets in agriculture are really critical and can really help with decision making is that by looking at a network of data you integrate data that is diverse. Data from your farm is very relevant for your farm, but only if your growing conditions remain unchanged year to year. And we know that that, in many cases, doesn't happen. If you make decisions that are only based on your own historical data, and then your growing conditions change a lot in future years, your data may actually be very misleading. If you look at an example FBN farmer, their year-to-year -year yield variability can be quite large. Whereas if you look at the FBN average yield across the whole network, that variability is a lot less. This leads to better decisions than making decisions that are only based on your own historical data, because if your growing conditions change next year, your data may not be as relevant as it seems. It may be very misleading and lead to the wrong decisions. Thanks a lot for listening. We enjoyed telling you more about data science and how FBN uses data and analytics to help our farmers farm more profitably. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, please check us out at farmersbusinessnetwork.com and we look forward to chatting with you.